Welcome back, and uh, in this segment, I'm happy to have with me one of the iconic figures in the fields of uh, Egyptology uh, to shed more light for us on the history of uh, this grand edifice, whether as Zafarana uh, Palace or even Ain Shams University itself. He is uh, the former minister uh, of uh, antiquities as well as professor of uh, archaeology and Egyptology at uh, the Faculty of Arts. I'm happy to have with me Egypt. Egyptologist, the renowned Egyptologist, Dr. Mamdouhid Damati. Welcome with us, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Damati, for being with us. Please uh, give us a, a, a brief lecture, if you will, on uh, the um, significance of the history of uh, Al-Zafaran uh, Palace. Actually, Al-Zafaran Palace has a very long history. It started 1809 by Muhammad Ali Basha when he built a special palace for him there called Al Haswa Palace. Uh, the area itself at that time was uh, Al Haswa. Then, 1849, came uh, Abbas Basha, Abbas I, uh, the uh, governor of Egypt in that time, and he called for the princes and other elite persons to build some palaces in El Haswa uh, to establish a new community attached to the Cairo to Cairo and in that time he started first to build for himself and he bought the palace of El Haswa uh, of Muhammad Ali Basha he bought it actually 1847 but two years later he called for other princes to build here in Haswa and he built his palace there and after he died, his son, uh, Ibrahim Ilhami Basha, took this palace. But after that, after the dying of this prince, also Ismail Basha bought the palace. And he added for this palace another four palaces and uh, to enlarge all these palaces. And it calls five sarai, uh, sarayat al-khamsa, five palaces. Actually, the five palaces from the time of Abbas. Uh, the first. Then, Ismail Basha connected three of these palaces together to be one palace, and surrounding the garden of this palace, about 40 fadan, 40 hectares, to uh, uh, 40 fadan, not like that, to, uh, uh, with the planet Zafaran, because it's a beloved planet for other, Al uh, Walda Basha, Khoshyar Hanim. And then he donated this palace to his mother, Khoshar Hanim, 1872. Actually, this palace is not here. It was in the area between this palace and the uh, Alson faculty mm. in Anshams. In this area, all this area connected yeah. together to, one, to be one palace of Ismail Basha. Mm. Then, after that, the Walda Basha built for her self a new palace, the palace El Ali in Garden uh, City, and removed her residence to be there. Then the palace taken from another uh, person, another wife of uh, uh, Khedewi uh, Ismail Basha, uh, called Nash'a del Kadin Hanim. And she took this palace. But later on, uh, especially 1875, the brother of, Abbas, of Ismail Basha came from Asitana and he lived in this palace, not in this one, in the old one. Uh, el, el, the faculty el, the, uh, Yeah, in this area, which is destroyed now. After that, also, uh, the Walda Basha would like to come back to el, uh, Zafarana. It was 1882. But in that time, it was very difficult because she w could not stay here for, long, for a longer time. Uh, the, 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 colonization or the colony of uh, the Britain came to Egypt and they took this palace, Al Zafarana Palace, for, uh, as a residence for them. Later on, it was happened something unique in Egypt. Two wives from Ismail Pasha lived with him in Asitana, and after his death, 1895, they came back to Egypt and they built this palace. It means this palace is added to Zafarana and took the name of 
Zafarana also from the, the old one, and it built in the garden of Zafarana Palace. For this reason, this palace, if you look to this palace, it is totally symmetrical, right like left. For each one of these wives, one side of this. And the both palaces stayed together for a longer time. Uh, but this one here, of the two wives, is also witness for some historical events, like the Treaty of uh, uh, 1936, the establishment of the uh, Arab League, it was also here in mm. uh, uh, 1945. Uh, mm. And the last event which may be added here before it taken to Enchamps University or to uh, Ibrahim Basha University, it was the uh, crowning ceremony of, uh, or the feast of the crowning of King Farouk, mm. 1950. Mm. And after that, taken to be uh, the house of uh, the new established university, Ibrahim Basha. Great. Dr. Ryan, I understand that the artistic features of this palace are quite unique. It's uh, more or less three or more flows. Would you uh, acquaint us with uh, this beautiful archaeological site? It is combination between Baroque and Gothic. Mm -hmm. You can see here the Baroque. It is very modern, mm -hmm. very unique, European, mm -hmm. and also with the lot of decoration is of uh, Gothic. It is from the new point of view in that time to have to re renew all the palaces or they make a new resonance of Egypt after the new art of Europe, especially in France, and taken here. But uh, actually, it is one of the most important palaces. And still now, you can see the top here, I, Ismail, the icon or the, yeah. the license yeah. of Ismail. Yes. However, this place is built after the death of Ismail mm. in the garden of the original Zafaran Palace and took also the name of Zafaran Palace. Um, Dr. Damati, uh, what about the, uh, uh, if we talk now about the university itself, not just as Zafaran Palace, the, the, uh, what were the circumstances that led to the foundation of, uh, of Ain Shams uh, University uh, itself? And what about own? and that supposed university that was here thousands of years ago. You talk about the historical connection between yes. the old yes. university and the new one. Yes. Actually, own university is the first university in the world. Hmm. Uh, started about 2700 BC. It means around 5000 years hmm. or 4700 years. Hmm. This one established in the area of own, which started from north El Marg, until Manchester Sadr here in South. Mm -hmm. It means M. Shams University or this palace connected in a way to the area of the, old, the ancient On. Mm -hmm. On also it was unique uh, university in that time for uh, medicine, for architect, for all s science in that astronomy. time. Astronomy. Astronomy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, in astronomy. Mm -hmm. uh, and for this reason, it was nice to, when we changed the name of Ibrahim Basha to found a name connected with the old one, Heliopolis, the city of, of the sun. And then uh, Ayn Shams to have the Arabic name, not the Greek name Heliopolis. And very good in that time, established in the, well, the beginning of the university, the first department of archaeology especially Egyptology, in Ain Shams University by the late uh, Dr. Ahmed Badawi, one of the famous Egyptologists in that mm. time, in the 50s and 60s. And he was also the director of, the, of, the Cairo, of, of Ain Shams University. Mm. And he is the one who designed or gave the idea of the name of Ain Shams in, uh, with the obelisk, yes. the sign of the sun, mm. the two falcons also mm. related to the sun, and inside the obelisk, you can read inside this obelisk, Per Ang, Per the house, Ang life, the house of life. It is the name of the schools in ancient Egypt, mm. means a school or university. Mm. Uh, per Ang, mm. Yom, University of 
Yon, the University of Pinchams. And the emblem is very connected to the area. And through this connection, makes it the idea why we have here a new university in the same area with the same name. Original. Original. Yeah. Dr. Damati, when we speak about the Faculty of Archaeology, uh, before I start speaking about the educational system, I'd, I'd rather, I'm quite interested in the digs, because I understand also that uh, you're head of uh, uh, the digs and uh, um, uh, discoveries as well here. And mm. you, you, before the interview, you told me that actually one of uh, your uh, expeditions is, is at own itself. So would you tell us a bit about uh, this department, please? Last year, mm -hmm. I started in Shams University mm -hmm. uh, to make new projects mm -hmm. for the first time for the University of Ain Shams mm -hmm. to make some excavations. Mm -hmm. And we choose the area of Yon, the mm -hmm. ancient uh, Ain Shams, mm -hmm. because we are belonging to this place, and uh, we have to do something for the area of Enchams. Then we started to uh, dig in Enchams, especially in Arab al -Hist. It is one of the part of the ancient temple of the Gadri. The temple of Gadri, actually in that time, in ancient time, was four times bigger than the Karnak temple. It started from the obelisk, which we have now, the obelisk of Sisutri I, King Sinusar I, from 12th dynasty, and about one kilometer to the west. There, the Arab al Hist, where we work there. And we found some new things there. We're working now in a famous palace, or we can say ceremonial palace of the Ramasai time of the King Ramses II and the kings from 19th and 20th dynasties. They built their palace as a ceremonial palace to be connected with the temple itself, the temple of Rey, there in that area. Doctor, uh, we'll continue talking about that after the break, but uh, we uh, have to go to a quick break. We're going to a quick break, but we'll continue with uh, Dr. Mamdouh Damati, the former Minister of Antiquities, and of course the renowned Egyptologist as well as Professor of Archaeology after the break. So stay with us. It's exactly 2 p.m. here in Cairo, time for the top stories. President Afet Sisi inaugurates on Thursday the summit of the G77 and China, which will be held in New York on the sidelines of the meetings of the United Nations General Assembly. The president is due to deliver Egypt's address to the summit, which will include Egypt's vision to develop cooperation between the group's members and means of coordinating stances among them. The group is a major economic and political bloc. The group discusses the needs of the developing countries and related issues as international trade, climate development projects and means of protecting interests of developing countries. Earlier on Wednesday, President Afatah Sisi uh, confirmed that climate change is the biggest challenge facing the world. This came during his speech before a high-level dialogue over the implementation of the Paris Accord on Climate Change in New York. The President stressed significance to activate the Paris Accord and reach a just deal which could preserve the balance, reali the balance realized by the accord between needed procedures and available support. President El Sisi said that Egypt has taken important steps in depending on renewable energy as solar and wind energy. President El-Sisi said that Egypt is ready to cooperate with the United Nations to mobilize efforts ahead of the 2019 summit called by the United Nations. 
President of the Hassisi met Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu at his residence in New York on the sidelines of his visit to the United States to take part in the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly meetings. The talks covered means of reviving peace talks with Palestinians. President El Sisi reiterated the importance of resuming peace talks with the aim of reaching comprehensive and just settlement for the Palestinian issue. In line with the relevant international resolution, the President said that reaching a final settlement to the Palestinian Israeli conflict will contribute in creating a new reality in the Middle East. For his part, Israeli Prime Minister expressed appreciation to Egypt's key role in the region, its efforts in fighting terrorism and in maintaining peace and stability in the region. Both Netanyahu and Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas are due to address the UN General Assembly later on Thursday, a day after U.S. President Donald Trump met the Israeli Premier and pledged to present a very fair Middle East peace plan by the end of the year. U.S. President Benjamin and U.S. President Donald Trump uh, vowed to present what he called a very fair Middle East peace plan by the end of the year and endorsed a two-state solution, apparently confident that the Palestinian people would return to talks, holding talks with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in New York. Trump said it was a dream of his to bring about a peaceful solution to a conflict that has eluded several of his predecessors. Trump said explicitly for the first time that he backed a two-state solution. However, Palestinian Foreign, Minister, Foreign Affairs Minister Riyad al-Maliki was unimpressed with Trump's remarks. Maliki said Trump needed to state clearly that a two-state solution would include a return to borders from before the 1967 Six-Day War and that East Jerusalem is occupied rather than part of Israel. Well, dear viewers, that's all for the top stories. Stay tuned for more coming up on 19 International. Welcome back. You're still watching Nile Cruz, uh, and uh, still with us is uh, Dr. Mamdouh Damati, former Minister of Antiquities and Professor of um, uh, Archaeology and uh, Egyptology in the Faculty of, uh, of Arts. Uh, thank you, Dr. Damati, for uh, staying with us. Thank you. Doctor, before the break, we were talking about excavations as, as head of the excavation department and the digs at Ain Shams University. You were briefing us about uh, the uh, digs in the area of Matariya, and you were talking to us about uh, some of the discoveries and breakthroughs of uh, your expedition there. Definitely, uh, that's quite a, a huge endeavor. And now, what about the, the dig season? Do you have a season? When would it start? When would it end? Actually, we have two seasons a year, mm -hmm. in uh, uh, spring mm -hmm. and in herbst. Uh, we start in herbst in uh, October and November, two months, and we have to stop to continue the uh, scientific work of, the, of what we found or what mm -hmm. we did. Mm -hmm. And also we have to stop in, in the winter because of the rain. Then we we'll started again in uh, the uh, spring uh, season, March. April, and we have to stop to continue the scientific work, and then the two months of the summer we cannot work there, and it means we have two seasons a year. Mm -hmm. uh, on our plan, we have to work first five years, mm -hmm. means ten seasons, to see and to make 
for our uh, in, in our plan of we can continue or we have to stop. But I think we have to continue because we found very new things and very good things to, we can say that in Shams University, rewrite the history of in Shams. Uh, when we started last year in uh, October 17, we found the new area and the construction with some houses built in the third intermediate period about uh, 900 BC over the same area of the Maras Ramasai time, New Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And in this area, we know that it was a palace, not pure temple, because then mm -hmm. we, we, we connected to the Temple of Rhea. Mm -hmm. The Temple of Rhea is not only the main temple, but also some chapels connected with the temple, some ceremonial palaces of the kings who attend the main ceremonies of the, of the temple, like what we found. Mm -hmm. And we found also some unique pieces there, mm -hmm. some statues and uh, some amulets, but the most important, what we found in the last season, in April 18, uh, the base of the uh, ceremonial chapel in the ceremonial palace. This ceremonial chapel of the, the main uh, jubileum of the king and the crowning of the king himself. And it is very unique because we have only one like this one in Saqqara from the Old Kingdom and it is the second one we found now. Yes. Doctor, that would lead us to talk about the Hepset Festival. Uh, please brief us a bit about it. Hep is, is festival. Mm -hmm. Set, it is unknown words mm -hmm. in ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. Some people uh, translate it as jubileum. Mm -hmm. Jubileum fest of the king. It is connected with the king actually to make uh, to renew the power of the king to mm -hmm. rule Egypt for another period. Mm -hmm. Many kings started to make this jubileum after 30 years of the reign of the king. Mm -hmm. But other, uh, they uh, 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 did these uh, ceremonies uh, before 30 years to rule. Mm -hmm. And some of them make many, sever, many uh, festivals of uh, said, many hep said. Mm -hmm. Like Ramses II, he did six. Mm -hmm. When we talk about 30 years, it is... Uh, Unbelievable. But he started the first one after 30 years, and every two years later, he, he did some of the ceremony for himself to renew the, his power to rule Egypt for another period. Mm -hmm. Dr. Damati, uh, Ain Shams, I mean, the, this uh, um, uh, c comes uh, along Egypt's history on many occasions. I mean, even if we read about um, uh, um, uh, the um, Am Amr ibn al As and, and, and the later periods, whenever there is a battle, whenever there is a, uh, a conquest, whenever there is something being built in the... Uh, it, it, throughout Egypt's history, Ain Shams always comes uh, in the, uh, on the spotlight from the days of the pharaohs till, till today. Could you talk to us know. about some, some of the things that most people don't know uh, uh, about what happened in Ain Shams? We can say that Ain Shams was the most important city in ancient Egypt. In the pharaonic time, especially in the Old Kingdom, as I told you before, that the temple of Re itself is four times large bigger than the temple of Karnak. It means it's a huge temple with per inch schools of uh, astronomy, uh, science and uh, medicine, architects, and all of these science were there. It means the ancient Shams played a very big and important role for the history and civilization of Egypt in that time. Through the whole period of pharaonic time, the pharaonic time ended 332 BC. BC yes. By the conquest of uh, Alexander, Alexander the Great, when he, he came and started the new era of Ptolemaic time or the Greek time, in that time, the Ptolemy, the, the Ptolemies, started to build a new city, new capital city, Alexandria. It means the more power what transferred from, to Alexandria. from the main cities in Egypt. Mm -hmm not in Karnak, mm -hmm. not, uh, uh, not, not in, in, uh, in Memphis, not in Heliopolis, the major three <coughs> cities of Egypt. Thebes, Luxor, Memphis, and Heliopolis. And the main center in that time, and during the uh, Greek and Roman time, was Alexander. Alexander's city, yes. But 
during the Greek time also, still we have me major ceremonies of the Gabri in Heliopolis. Started in the after the death of Cleopatra, the seventh, 30 BC. Started new era for Alexandria, and the Roman, when they came to Egypt, they removed the obelisks from Mataria, a lot of obelisks, to um, re-establish um, them in Alexandria or in Rome. Mm. Then we trans they transferred a lot of obelisks to Rome, and you can find them till now mm. there. And they took also some of them in Alexandria, which removed later one in London and the second one in New York, yes. and so-called uh, the obelisk of Cleopatra. This time of the Roman time, it means the major of Heliopolis is uh, not the same yes. like mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Then, after the Roman time, came Amr ibn al to Egypt and begrounded and, and established a new city, El Fustat, mm. uh, the new capital of Egypt. Mm. It means a lot of people left the area of Heliopolis and went to Fustat for the new city, for the new life, for the new, uh, uh, we can say, economic center mm. for life. And that time, then, we have no Heliopolis mayor. Mm. And, and, uh, yeah. Not more Heliopolis. Mm -hmm. Yes, but, uh, but, but, but any time, sorry Russia, uh, any time you had to um, conquer Ain Shams or, uh, uh, um, you know, score something in Ain Shams to have a place in Egypt. Ain Shams played the second role always in Egypt, mm. after Memphis or after Thebes, but the major role. Yes. Uh, doctor, following the Sinite kings and, uh, of the first and second dynasties, we find the, the area of the Memphite necropolis booming. And, we, and definitely we have to talk up when we talk about the, the solar cult of Ra, then it's Heliopolis or uh, even uh, Shma'it uh, on uh, the northern own. And uh, definitely. Are you a Egyptologist? You know, uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> Shemaite? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I'm trying to impress you. <laughs> uh, and, and definitely then we talk about the solar cult of God, Ra, and we talk about the first solar calendar. Uh, would you talk to us about that, please, Doctor? The solar calendar is uh, unique things of Egypt. Mm -hmm. It started also about 2700 BC in mm -hmm. Heliopolis, mm -hmm. in, in Shams, here, mm -hmm. uh, and with the, um, Hotep, uh, the famous architect mm -hmm. and astronomer mm -hmm. in the time of King Djoser. Mm -hmm and connected the, the calendar in that time with the, uh, the inundation of the Nile mm -hmm. and also with the uh, uh, solar disk. Mm -hmm. It means this combination between the foundation, uh, uh, inundation and the uh, solar. Mm -hmm. This calendar stayed in Egypt until the end of the Pharaonic time. Mm -hmm. But in the same time, we use also the lunar calendar, moon calendar. We have both. Nile calendar or solar calendar in, in, in later on mm -hmm. and moon calendar and they mm -hmm. stayed in Egypt until the time of King Ptolemy III and he makes some renovation for this calendar to add one day every four years to have the uh, three, 300 uh, Sixty six uh, days of the of the, the year. The twenty ninth of February. Uh, uh, right, mm. and in the time of uh, Cleopatra, the end of the time of Cleopatra, mm -hmm. or with the connection with Julius Caesar, mm -hmm. when she went to Rome to visit Julius Caesar, there she took with her some of the mm -hmm. teacher from Heliopolis and Alexandria. There, mm -hmm. from Alexandria, they try to bring the new calendar of Egypt or the calendar of Egypt to be new calendar for Rome. Mm -hmm. And they use it there. And in that time called the Julian calendar after Julius Caesar. Mm -hmm. yes. Till the Pope Gregorius, Gregorius uh, uh, 11th and, uh, or 13th, I, I didn't remember, Pope Gregorius. Uh, it was later named the Gregorian calendar. Yeah, and he changed yes. it to, because the, the, uh, the actual year, is not 366, but 365 or 66 less 
10 minutes and uh, uh, 40 seconds and it makes one day each 128 years. It means each 128 years we have to make another uh, we, did, we did use one day. Yeah, yeah. just one day. For this reason, in the time of the Pope Gregorius, he uh, make a period of 10 days changed. Mm. The people st uh, uh, spend the night from 4 to 5th October. Mm. Next day was 15 October. Mm. <laughs> 10 days change, and he make this renovation of the calendar. Uh, it means the calendar itself started in Egypt and came back with new names, the Roman names or Latin names, January, February, and so on. But also, our calendar is stayed till now in the same system we used before in ancient Egypt, the so-called Coptic calendar. Yes. Mm. Yeah. We started with the month of Tut, till this month. Mm. Started uh, September 12, mm. the f uh, first day of the Coptic calendar. And this calendar added, uh, uh, it is um, 12 months, each month 30 days, and added with another month five days, mm -hmm. which will be six days after four years. Mm -hmm. It's the same. Yes, yes of, of course, and, and the names of, of the months of this uh, Coptic calendar are part of the terminology, are, are part of Egy the language. Egyptian names, yeah. pharaonic names. Yeah. Tut comes from, uh, comes from uh, Jehuti, Tot, the god Tot. Yes. Hathor is from the goddess Hathor. And they are part of our language today. Yes. I mean, we say Zabib Amshir, we say uh, uh, Tuba. We say, yeah, we, we mention all this. It's part of our yes, language. Yes, isn't yes. It? Yes. Doctor, definitely, when we speak about the digs and excavation, that's uh, an entire science on its own. And that would lead us to talking about uh, training uh, those on the expedition, because it's not just about digging. Definitely, there are certain myth methodology how to deal with even the sand itself. Uh, and definitely a lot of staff, because definitely you have the, the archaeologists, you have those who are into pottery, languages, so on and so forth. So would you just give us an insight about the digs and the it excavation? Is very it's very different between area to another, mm -hmm. sand area. Uh, or uh, cultivated area also. Mm. Like what we have now in Mataria, it is mm. cultivated area with very bad ground wasser. Mm. Uh, yeah. uh, and also, the area is very difficult to work in mud. It means we have to have some specialists to work in this area mm. to be sure uh, about the steps we use mm. to come from the layer to the second to, to the third layer mm -hmm. to go down to the earth to found the, the, the objects. Uh, and also we make, uh, we can say, excavation school or area school for students. They come to learn also and to know what we do. They make some training to continue their studies in the field of digging or excavations. Dr. Damati, we're really enjoying this, but we uh, we have to end it. We still have um, uh, more uh, uh, distinguished guests like yourselves to come. So uh, we thank you very much for being with us. We thank you for the information and and um, thank you so for much. the passion uh, <laughs> you, you are transmitting to us about our history. Thank well, you so much, thank uh, you, Doctor Ramdouh Damati, the former Minister of Antiquities. Uh, one of the icons of Egyptology in Egypt, Egyptologist, archaeologist, and head of uh, the excavation department here at Ain Shams University. Thank you very much for being with us. And now we'll go to a quick break, but we'll be back for more on our cruise. So stay with us. <laughs> 